And now on to our dinosaur of the day, you Streptospondylus, which was a request from Cole via Patreon, so thanks, Cole. The name means true Streptospondylus, and that means turned vertebra. It was a megalosaurid that lived in the Middle Jurassic in what is now England. The fossil was found in 1870 and at first was assigned to other genera. In 1870, some workers found a theropod skeleton at Somerton Brick Pit, north of Oxford, England. James Parker, a local bookseller, acquired them and then showed them to John Phillips, an Oxford professor. And Phillips described the fossils in 1871, but didn't give them a name. At the time, though, it was the most complete skeleton of a large theropod found. Baron Franz Nopska reassigned the skeleton to Streptospondylus cuviae in 1905 to 1906. Richard Owen at first described it in 1842, and this is based on it being related to the type species Streptospondylus altorvensis. Unfortunately, that was named based on very incomplete remains. Also, Frederick von Huhn apparently sometimes called the specimen Streptospondylus cuviae and other times Megalosaurus cuviae. Alec Donald Walker renamed it to a new genus in 1964 to Eustreptospondylus oxoniensis, and the species name refers to Oxford. He also named a second species, Eustreptospondylus divsensis, in 1964 based on a French find, but in 1977 this was reclassified as the genus Piptosaurus. Eustreptospondylus is the most complete large theropod from Jurassic Europe so far. Only one skeleton has been found so far. And in 2000, Oliver Rahut found that there are only minor differences in the hip bones between Eustreptospondylus and Magnosaurus, which is another megalosaurid. And in 2003, he suggested that they should be the same genus. So Eustreptospondylus would be Magnosaurus oxoniensis. But not everybody agrees with this, as is often the case. In 2010, Gregory Paul suggested it was the same as Streptospondylus altdorfensis. Rudyard Sadler published a modern description of Eustreptospondylus in 2008. It was found on an island and lived when Europe was mostly made of islands, so it may have been able to swim. But not everyone agrees on this, and some think that it was just swept out to sea when it died instead of swimming to an island before it died. Yeah, I've seen that before, the argument of whether things were swimming or if they just happened to end up in the water at the end. Yeah. The holotype is of a pretty complete skeleton and is probably a subadult. In 1924, the holotype was prepared and put on exhibit in an erect position, but this was changed to a more horizontal position in the early 2000s. It used to be thought of as a dwarf species, but then in 2000, David Martill and Darren Nash pointed out that it was a subadult and not a dwarf species, so it wasn't some kind of island dwarfism. Gregory Paul estimated that Eustreptospondylus was 15.2 feet or 4.63 meters long and weighed about 481 pounds or 218 kilograms. It could potentially grow up to 29.5 feet or 9 meters long. It had large hind limbs and small forelimbs, and it had a pointed snout and large horizontal nostrils. It had a thick skull and tall, wide jaws. No teeth were found, but based on the tooth sockets, it had an enlarged third tooth in its lower jaw. Which is, I wonder what it used that for. It was carnivorous and bipedal and had a slightly stiff tail. It ate smaller dinosaurs and pterosaurs and may have scavenged for fish, marine reptiles, and other dinosaurs. You can see Eustreptospondylus in episode 3 of BBC's Walking with Dinosaurs. It shows it swimming. Also, one is eaten by a Leopleurodon while fishing. And then later, two of them eat a beached Leopleurodon, so circle of life. Also, Eustreptospondylus is featured in the primeval novel Fire and Water. As I mentioned, it's part of the family Megalosauridae, which Huxley named in 1869 as a family. It was a wastebasket group, meaning it included a large variety of unrelated species like Dryptosaurus, Ceratosaurus, Indosaurus, Velociraptor. They tended to live in the mid to late Jurassic and in Europe, North America, South America, and Africa. They're cousins of Spinosauridae. Thomas R. Holtz offered an alternate group definition at one point as all dinosaurs more closely related to Megalosaurus than to Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, or modern birds. They're primitive theropods, small to large size, with sharp teeth, and they had three claws in each hand. Big predators are usually harder to find than prey, so there's not too much known about Megalosaurus. 